Hey there, folks. Uh, so, let's do some Joy-Con stuff. So, I got this, uh, got these shells a little while back from a Retro Game Repair Shop, and I, um, neglected to do my due diligence on that, but, um, we're gonna get that taken care of today. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I found these two perfectly working uh, Joy-Cons in my junk drawer. I have them hooked up to my Switch right now. Everything seems to be working. The only thing that was wrong with them, um, I think is just that I don't have a pair. Uh, so I don't have two green ones and I don't have two gray ones. So I just threw them in the junk drawer. Um, but I can fix that by just reshelling them and then uh, recoloring them. Uh, so one thing I did want to reshell these ones instead. Um, these are some aftermarket housings and aftermarket buttons. They're fine. They really are. But I'm not playing that up for the camera. That's that's how that's how rough these are to slide in and out of the switch. And like I know this particular switch, um, the back is literally broken on it and it's it's bent. But the rails are fine. Um, it's the shells that are rubbing against the the switch, and it just doesn't fit well. I'm kind of dissatisfied with it. Uh, but I only have the red sticks right now. I don't know where the extra black sticks are without taking apart um, more Joy-Cons in the junk drawer. And if I'm doing that, well, I might as well just use these. Uh, but anyway, I think they're charged up enough. Let's get these here. Oh, it didn't come. Oh, there it goes. Just took a sec. Um, they're both working, so I'm going to reshell them. Uh, set that aside. And I do still have the colorful LED Joy-Cons for that switch. Um, those colorful ones are the ones I use with that switch. I just, I want to do some work on those too, but that's for a separate video. Uh, so... If you order one of these um, through Retro Game Repair Shop, and I will have them linked in the description, you get these exterior housings and um, not six buttons, but four buttons. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, but yeah, you just get these. It doesn't include the um, little straps that are color coded. Uh, so the OEM straps are just black, but I think the Scarlet Violet sc straps are white and then the, the strap part itself matches the color of the plastic. Um, doesn't include those, you'll just have to use your black ones or track them down separately. It does not include the part of the switch either. Um, so, <laughs> not the same thing, but on my switch I have that, um, uh, Pikachu EV Let's Go backplate. Um, it doesn't, there, there's no backplate included with these. It does not include either the buttons. I just have them because, well, like I said, I was going to reshell these black ones uh, with these red buttons and I wanted OEM buttons, but I can't find any sticks right now. Uh, so I'll save that for another time because this one has perfectly good buttons. Uh, so I guess I'm going to start with the easier of the two, the left Joy-Con. Um, and when I say easier, I, I guess I just mean there are fewer parts. <laughs> it's not necessarily easier. Like, this one doesn't have that IR camera in it, or the, um... The Amiibo thing, I, I believe. The NFC sensor. But otherwise, these things are effectively mirror images of each other. Four tri-wing screws, and then the back lifts off. Some plastic clips holding things together. Do take care, though. There are two ribbon cables connecting this stuff up. I am going to go ahead and unplug the battery first. 
then flip that bail up so I can release this ribbon. And I can't, oh yeah, I can get to that bail. Flip that up and release that. Ooh, looks like this thing's due for a new battery. This thing's a little bit bloated. Get some new batteries. Three screws, is it? Yep. I'm gonna flip that up. Be careful for yet another ribbon cable. These ribbon cables are why people often say these things are extremely tedious. I don't, I really don't think they're that bad, but I can understand why um, people might have difficulty. This sort of thing does require a lot of dexterity, but you know what helps quite significantly? Having a good pair of tweezers. I'll just pull that out first. One. Two. Come on. Careful of the spring and the L and R buttons. Uh, and then four more screws and we're pretty much done disassembling the left Joy-Con. you're following along at home and you're reshelling your Joy-Cons, now is absolutely the time to stop and clean your buttons if you're reusing them or your membranes. Um, my buttons are, through some strange miracle, um, visibly very clean. So I'm just going to leave them as is, pull everything out. Uh, oh, and I need this bad boy. Well, I don't know if I need it, but Nintendo bothered installing them for a reason, so clearly it serves a purpose. Oh, and I totally forgot to open these. So it's my understanding that these housings are effectively new old stock. Um, they were required, at least I remember Retro Game Repair Shop getting them, um, right about when the limited edition Switch actually came out, so that's, that's how long I've been sitting on these. But I have been told that they are effectively OEM housings. Uh, well, not effectively, they are OEM housings. So let's see how good the fit and finish is on that. I'm just wiping the corners of these buttons down with a cotton cloth, AKA my t-shirt. The 
direction buttons are all the same. You don't have to put the up button in the up position. Um, but they're all keyed so that they only go in the one way. I just mean that you can put the up button in the left buttonhole and, and so on. Unlike the ABXY buttons. that. Oh, that thing's kind of gross too. Been playing a lot of Switch lately. And um I don't know. I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of regretting not having any good controllers for it. Like most of my Switch Pro controllers are 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 busted. I don't I don't know why I have so many that don't work, but I bought a lot of them as in one single lot that contained a bunch of broken units and I haven't fixed any of them. And then I have my original one that I just bought to play switch with and one of the sticks is dead ever since my cat puked on it so i've been using joy cons and i would really appreciate having a nice set of joy cons around It is my understanding that there is no effective difference between any of the models of Joy-Cons, so... I mean, I'm sure there have been incremental hardware updates, but I just mean you can... You can take launch model 2017 Joy-Cons and install them in these housings if you want, or you can take OLED Joy-Cons. Ah, shoot. Which one was which? Top left and bottom right. All right, and because we're screwing metal screws into plastic, the usual game plan applies. We're not gonna crank these things down to within an inch of their own lives. What we're gonna do is we're gonna snug the screws up and then back them up a quarter turn or so. They should still be more than tight enough to keep everything nice and solid. That bail open the entire time. I'm surprised that thing didn't slip out. Okay. Let's get this in there. Now, I suppose it's also worth mentioning, if you're taking your Joy-Cons apart to reshell them, now's as good a time as any to uh, swap out the sticks if that's something you're interested in doing. I mean, it's no extra work. You've already got the thing apart. Down real quick. 
trying desperately not to lose that spring. Okay. So far, so good, right? All right. Now we need to move on to the back of the shell and the button. So if you don't mind your um, the little bezel between the two shoulder buttons being the original color, you could just leave this as is and swap this in. In my particular case, I don't want a green and gray one, so I'm going to swap this. But this is what I would consider the most difficult part of reshelling is getting these buttons back in. <laughs> uh, but we need to kind of pry this out. There are, if you look real close, there are two detents that capture the button itself, and then two detents on the button for the springs, and then two detents on the platform for the other side of the springs. You can usually flex it and get the button out um, it's a lot easier once you understand the mechanism in there, but it's kind of hard if you're going in blind, if you've never done one of these before. It's very, very tedious, but it's not too bad once you get the hang of it. Uh, but just pop that out. We'll pull those springs out. And then the clicky button itself. Replace the springs. Usually they do not cooperate. Okay, there we go. This one's not cooperating. And then to reinstall the button, you've got to get the detents for both of the springs lined up with the nubbins on the button itself and then push straight down and it should just work. Bob Gianti. That'll go in there but first I need to prep this part. There's a little bit of double-sided tape on this tray for the battery. I'm not gonna bother transferring that over. I'm not even gonna bother with double-sided tape because this battery needs to get replaced, so we'll do that eventually. One screw here. We can just pull this entire rail off. Oh, unfortunately, this thing could use new locks. I should have checked that before doing this. Um, I'm not going to replace it. The problem is... We take this thing, this is a right Joy-Con, I believe. Yep. So normally you should have to press this button so that you can release this rail and slide it out, but this lock's already busted, so it just clicks and slides out. I don't mind that so much. I'm not gonna replace it. But just because there's a lot of misinformation going around, going around with this stuff. Holy cow. Um, these locks, this latch right here, this is plastic for a reason. This is, um, I'm, I'm forgetting if this is the, the proper term for it, but it's effectively a sacrificial button. The entire point of this latch being plastic and not metal is so that when your switch gets dropped with the Joy-Cons in, the latch breaks and the Joy-Con just you know, pops out of the rail, slides out, without damaging the rail on the switch. If you replace these locks with metal, which, sure, fine, if you want to, you'd be my guest, and then you drop your switch, <laughs> the locks are no longer what breaks. The rail is what breaks. The rail is a lot more difficult to replace. So, you, you do you, but I'm going to keep my plastic latches. Um, oh, I didn't need to pull all that out. I 
have two extra buttons. It was probably the two I just dumped out, but that's okay. The orange controller gets the orange buttons and the purple controller gets the purple buttons. Go in just like that. Take our silly little membrane, stick it in our silly little button. Drop my sync button back in because I got a little too excited and pulled it out. keep wanting to put my finger exactly where the button is to hold this thing and that and that and that doesn't work because <laughs> it presses on the board I'm trying to screw in okay uh, uh, uh. there it is I need there it is. I have totally forgotten which way this goes in. I'm guessing it only goes the one way though. Yep. I've also totally forgotten what screw it is. I think it was this one. Probably a lot easier to leave this back plate unscrewed until you're ready to do the final assembly. It is only one screw to pull the rail off, but uh, we're just gonna send it, see what happens. As long as we do the battery last, we won't accidentally short something out and blow a fuse. Because I have done that before, and that's not fun, and I have a video on that. And it is 100% a fuse, and not a zero ohm resistor, like I may or may not have said in the video. did not have a lot of thread and I definitely over torqued it. I think I stripped that screw post but it doesn't matter too much. Um, that one's that one's less structural than the others. Uh, what am I forgetting? Battery. That's it. I don't know why that was so hard for- don't put the battery connector in with tweezers. Tweezers are conductive unless you have ceramic tweezers. Uh, I like to tuck that ribbon cable under the battery tray, but I don't think it needs to be tucked. Snaps on, and Bob Gianti. Just throw the last screws in here.
slipped, which means I marked the screw. Oh well. Not like these won't have to come apart in the very near future for that battery anyway. Oh, and that latch I'll probably want to replace at some point. Ta-da! Now, of course, when I dock this, you, you see it's still the gray controller outline instead of red. Uh, oh. That's still paired? Come on, you can do it. There it goes. Um, yeah, still showing up as gray, but we can change that. Uh, so what I have to do is I have to pair this by Bluetooth to a computer. I don't know if you can do it on a cell phone, or Android or anything like that, um, Android, iOS, whatever. I don't, I don't know, but I know you can do it on a Windows computer. Uh, if you pair it over Bluetooth, there is some open source software that you can use called, I believe it is JC Toolkit, and you can use it to change the colors of the Joy-Con. But let's test controller buttons. And Everything is working. Excellent. And let's do control stick. Yep, everything's still copacetic. Cool, so now let's move on to the other one. Let that thing charge. Probably shouldn't, given that the battery is uh, loading, but whatever. She'll be right. Let's move on to the right Joy-Con. And same thing with this one. This one's going to show up as green every time I plug it in until I fix that in the homebrew. I wonder if it's something you can do with a modded switch. I'll have to look into that. It seems like you should be able to. But I don't actually know. All right, so I despise this one a little bit more than the other one because there are quite a few more pieces. But all in all, it's not that bad. We're gonna slip this board out and then we don't have to unplug. They're the same three screws just in a different place. And the slack on this one, on this cable, is a lot less than the other one. But comes out the same, more or less. Trying to remember if there are any more gotchas for this. I don't think there are. I 
think it just comes out now. Just a lot of pieces. This cracked loose, just a little bit of double-sided adhesive usually sticks to the rumble motor itself, and then we can pop the IR camera out. Also just a little bit of double-sided adhesive. Those don't look gross, do they? No. I'm gonna wipe them off anyway, though. Oh, I 100% want to do the sticky bits first. A little hair in here. I can't grip it with the tweezers. There you go. Provides a nice little cosmetic skirt, I guess. Uh, I don't know how important these bits are. I mean, honestly, it's the home button. You don't hit it that much. A little bit of foam in here. And I mean, even if you do, I don't know about you guys, but it's never mapped to anything in-game. Like, it just quits the game. So, well, it doesn't really matter how it feels, in my opinion. But that's not too bad to transfer over. dust off. Drop my plus in there. That is not how that orientates. There we go. Orients. And 
antenna lined up. Drop the IR camera in. I don't know, is this thing actually used for any games? I'm, I genuinely don't know. None of the games I play use it. Because all of the games I play are compatible with controllers that it's not equipped on. I think with the uh, Joy-Cons specifically, the Joysticks rather, um, it might be prudent to do instead of a quarter turn back, do a whole turn so that the actual assembly is just loose in the shell. It is my theory that long term, this can help with drift. I have no proof of that, but it's a theory that I'm working on. Uh, oh, let's do this first. Shoulder button comes out the exact same way. Actually, I have an idea. I bet it is heaps easier to plug this in, drop that in, and then install it, rather than the way I usually do it. Let's try that out, huh? Oops, I forgot to close that bell. I'm gonna wipe this off so I can get ready to drop it in. Let me do this first. Now I can plug these in, and then I can put the tree in.
Oh man, that was heaps easier getting that, getting this tray in that way. Highly recommended for the left Joy-Con. Right Joy-Con, excuse me. I've been doing this the wrong way the whole time. And what do we have left? Uh, oh, definitely got to put this uh, antenna back. I wasn't paying attention when I put the tray in and I put the tray on top of it. Cable management is inside the tray. What's left? Battery? I think so. I don't think that one's bloated. It might be. But I, don't, I don't know. Letting me tuck it, but my thumb is too grippy. Ah, there we go. It should go together without having to be held together. I think this is a problem I ever looked when I reshelled my other Joy-Cons. The first time you see how it's just bulging out, which is the reason I want to work on these. This doesn't do that, at least once the screws are in. Um, I'm saying you shouldn't have to hold it together, but trust me when I say it's, it's just a, a flat flex cable that's pushing on this thing. Uh, where's my screwdriver? Ah, they are magnetic. How dare you, Nintendo?
All right. I think we're good. Grab the switch. I guess we'll start with the stick. Seems to be working. Uh... And all my buttons are working. Deal. Ta-da! That's it. We're all done! Um, if you don't care about the color, which if you start with two gray Joy-Cons, it's probably fine to just leave them. But if you did what I did and you started with a green or any other mismatched, um, obviously you're going to want to change that to match your controllers. You don't have to. And in theory, in theory, it's better if you don't, you know, in, in case, you know, Papa Nintendo's tracking the colors and serial numbers, but they probably aren't. And realistically even if they are it's not bannable since you could just go buy joy cons like if i were to go to gamestop and buy a pair of black joy cons that were originally um this color but someone reshelled because well if they looked like this they ought to have been reshelled you know like that that wouldn't be that wouldn't be cool of nintendo to ban for that so i don't think they do but you know, I'm just saying, just saying. Uh, anyway, I think that's about it. They work. Uh, you can see everything's closed up nice and tight, unlike my other Joy-Cons, which is very nice. Um, everything seems to be working. I even feel the rumble every time I do that. Uh, so my haptic feedback is working. I've got all the the fancy art, as far as I can tell, these are OEM housings. They certainly feel OEM. Everything feels good. I'm good with it. Um, that's pretty sweet. Uh, yeah, it does take a while. I mean, I just did two Joy-Cons in less than 50 minutes, but... This is not my first rodeo. I've been here before. Um, in fact, I have several bags full of Joy-Con parts just in case I needed them. Uh, I I, <laughs> I expected this to take longer and require spare parts. Or, I didn't expect it to, but I anticipated that it would plan accordingly. But, I don't know. It's fine. I've got my extra buttons here. I'll save these shells because they are fine. Um, they're they're worn down it shows in the texture quite seriously on both of them uh, though the green one is a lot harder to pick up on camera um, but they've both gone smooth whereas the texture should be matte um, but otherwise they're perfectly intact so I'll save them in case I ever stumble across some other joy cons that just need shells and I can't be um, Can't be fucked to go get some uh, fancy dancy OEM ones. I did those uh, white ones a little while back too. Those were pretty nice. Uh, but I used aftermarket buttons for those. I believe these are OEM housings as well. They certainly feel like it. Um, and they've got all the markings to boot. I don't know why these just pop up in... Uh, how about like they do? Um, I have aftermarket buttons in these. They're fine, except that this one just straight doesn't have a working R button. Yeah, and the A button kind of sucks. You can see the controller's not work waking up while I hit A, but if I hit B, it wakes right up. That sort of stuff. Uh, but A does work. You just gotta press it real hard. Um, that's not a fault of the shell. The shell's nice. I'm really tempted to, to shuck these things for my nice ones, but yeah, that's fine. I'll get to that sometime later. Uh, but anyway, I think that's about all I've got. Um, if you let me ramble, I will do exactly that. So I think I'm going to end it here. Um, I will go ahead and link to where I grabbed these 
uh, in the description. I went ahead and got them from Retro Game Repair Shop. Um, yeah, they're they're exactly what they say they are. Um, everything seems to work well. The price is right, and I get to pretend now that I have original limited edition Switch hardware, which technically I do. It's just not from. Well, it's even from Nintendo, as far as I can tell, just not officially. <laughs> uh, but anyway, whatever. You get the idea. You get what I'm rambling at. Um, so yeah, I'll link to the stuff in the description. Thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for shooting this stuff my way to check out. Um, neat stuff, and uh, I'll catch you all next time.